This week I show how you can reuse a character in different animation projects by importing him using subex sheets. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name's Darren and I make weekly tutorials for open tunes and the occasional animation. If that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe so you don't miss out. If you plan to use your cutout character for more than one animation, which I imagine you would, as one of the main benefits of using cutout is reuse, you'd create your cutout in its own scene in a project, and then import it into each different scene of a separate project. So let's take a quick look at that. So here I'll create a new project, and I'll create a new scene. So to import your character, you simply go to the file menu, and you click load as subex sheet. Find your character in the browser, go to scenes and then choose your character, hit load. And it'll ask if you want to import or load the character. And if you choose load, it loads the drawings and connections from the original location, which means if you change the drawings in the other project, you'll see them updated in this project. And if you choose import, it'll take a copy of all of the drawings and connections and bring them into this project so if you change the drawings in here, it won't affect the original drawings. Now for this instance, I'll just choose import so I can't accidentally break them. Okay, so there's the skeleton. In the timeline, you see the skeleton subex sheet shown as a single column. So let's rename that first. And of course we'll want a background, so let's load that in again as a subex sheet. And I've already drawn a cemetery background, so I'll load that. And I'll choose to import it again. We'll make sure the cemetery is behind the skeleton, so the skeleton can be seen. So to create your new animation, you want to step into that sub egg sheet, and you do so using this button here. And I've talked about sub egg sheets in a lot more detail in other tutorials, so I won't go into too much detail here. But just quickly run through how you set up an animation. So what we do is extend these frames out for as long as the animation continues. And let's quickly just add a couple of keys. So if I play that animation, he rocks left and back to the centre. So you'll notice the animation lasts for 24 frames. So if we step out of the animation here, now there's still only one frame on the main timeline. So you need to extend this to show all 24 frames. Because if you press play, there's nothing to play, just the first frame. So the symmetry is easy to extend. You can just click the handle and drag it to 24. The skeleton is shown frame 1. As we can see in here, if we extend that to frame 2, and then we need to show each frame of the sub X sheet going through from 1 to 24. So on frame number 2, we want to show sub X sheet drawing number 2. And to do that, we can use the cells drawing substitution. And pressing W or Q exposes the previous or the next drawing in the current frame. So if I press W, that'll go to drawing number 2, then 3, then 4. Q brings it back down, and I'll leave it on 2. And now if you select on drawings number 1 and 2, when you click and drag on this button, you can extend up to drawing 24. If you keep going, you notice the high numbers are shown in red, which means there's no drawings in the sub-egg sheet for that. So we'll drop that down to 24, and let's take a look. And it plays the animation. And the final thing to show is that you can add animation frames to the actual sub-egg sheet on the main timeline. So for instance, on frame 1, I can press the key button, and then on frame 24, if I put the centre point here, I can click and drag the character to move to the right. So now when you play the animation, the character will move to the right, as well as play an animation that's in the sub X sheet. And of course, you can add any other transformations to him. So for instance, I could scale him, and perhaps move him to the back, so it shows him moving to the distance. So this allows you to place your character in the right position in the scene, as well as having the contained animation. So that's how you can use your cutout character in different projects. And next week I'll be looking at hooks, and how they can help build your character more flexibly, so your characters don't look so rigid. So why not hit that subscribe button to not miss it. And comment below if you have any questions about open tunes. So I'll see you next week when I look at hooks. And that's a guarantee.